fire of the Holy Ghost to be upon your life this morning. In the name of Jesus, I am believing for somebody to catch on fire. Oh, hallelujah. That's been my prayer. That's been my contention. God, set me on fire for you, oh God. Regardless of my situation and my circumstances, set me on fire. So, the, so normally, if you're a mature Christian, you recommit to the Holy Spirit, right? So now he begins to in, indwell you and infill you um, uh, based on that new commitment to him, right? So when those spirits leave, they come back with spirits seven times more influential. And I want to describe that because I think Hollywood and TV has made us think that Demons can just go in and out of people's body. It don't work like that. Like, it's hard for a demon to get a body. So when they get one, they fight to keep it. Just like it was hard for the Holy Spirit to come in us. It took a work. They don't just go in and out, right? So, so, so once they have one, they're committed to that body. So they go get reinforcements to get back in. So for us, when the, when the Spirit of God, we make that commitment to him, then even when they come back, we can feel the oppression coming in, but we're able to stand. When somebody doesn't do that, let's just say they go through deliverance, right? But they hadn't been taught that this is also a recommitment back to the Holy Spirit. When those spirits come back, they'll, they'll, they'll go into what he called a downer. Because now it's like, I feel worse than before. Well, that's because the attack is worse than before, but they didn't fortify themselves with a new commitment to the Holy Spirit. So that's what that's what I, that's what happens sometimes. And so what I say when I say the Holy Spirit, I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit leaving you. Because Ephesians 1 to 13 says that the moment that you believe, the moment that you were saved, you have the Holy Spirit. But that don't mean we have intimacy with him. Let me say this. I'm thoroughly convinced in the body of Christ, not dream big, the rest of the body of Christ that we don't believe the Holy Spirit is a person. I, I think sometimes we may think like maybe he's like a force, like wind with a tail, cloud with an eyeball, energy, fire, right? We don't understand that really he's a person that's walking with us. And so when we don't, like have that consciousness that this is a person walking and talking with me, he's easily dismissed. Paul described it this way, we can quench him. We can sear our conscience from him. We can suppress him. But he is a, a person who has feelings and desires and wishes and wants, right? So when people don't understand that concept, when they get delivered, they don't start walking back again with the Holy Ghost as a person, right? They're just good if they just start speaking in tongues again. No, he's a person that you got to recommit to. Talk to again, bless you. Have a conversation with again. I am daily telling the Holy Spirit when I mess, oh, Holy Spirit, I apologize. I know I know that was not your will, what I just did. Please forgive me, because he's God. You know the Holy Spirit is God. Oh, Holy Spirit, I'm not feeling up to it today. I need your energy, based on Colossians 1 and 29. Oh, Holy Spirit, this thing that's coming against me, this thing is going to be tough. You know that's my weakness. Please walk with me. Oh, Holy Spirit, I made a mistake. Give me the wisdom to correct that. And he talks to you. He's not just a force. He's not just something that lives in you to give you power and energy and speak in tongues. No, he's a real person that has real feelings. And he wants to guard you and help you and keep you safe. So when things come in your life, you hide behind him. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor T.
for the for the side of the demon, the demonic force, how it takes over and the control and the power it has over or it can have over a person who is not a believer or who is a stronger in faith. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, because remember I taught you that spiritual warfare is really about standing and withstanding. That's Ephesians 6. It's not kill you, devil, kill you, but it's the ability to be able to stand for God. I, I, I wanna um I wanna say this Tiff and, and to bounce off what you said what you just said. The goal is to one day grow to a point, every everybody in this room, this is the goal. Every day to to, to one day grow to a point to to walk in um what we call the spirit of prophecy. That is, and I want you to know there's an end point to this, to where you can say, I'm spiritually mature. I'm um I am uh, what Paul says, meat for the master's use. That way you walk into an environment and don't have to talk. And stuff begin to change. That is, that is the goal. That is the goal to be able to walk into a place and stuff start changing because you're there. And it's just because the human side of you is dead. And the power of God can so free, uh, flow so freely through you that he begins to have his way with whatever's going on in that room. The, the reason that we have to work up stuff, we have to get motivated, we have to come pour gasoline up here, set it on fire, jump on the, the chandeliers, call on God, beat ourselves to get him to move, is just because there isn't that part of our life yet that we can just walk in and automatically be on fire. Speaking from the pulpit to the pews, but that's where we're all going to. That's what the prophets of Baal had to do when they was contending with Elijah. Elijah said, y'all go ahead and call on y'all gods. So he started, so those prophets, they took swords and they started cutting themselves and the blood was gashing out. They was calling on Baal, Baal, help us, Baal, Baal. Do something with the God of the Hebrews. And they did that, the Bible said, from morning to night. Jumping up and down, screaming, shouting, trying to get power. And Elijah did this. He said, are y'all finished? <laughs> and so they was exhausted and tired. Some of them committed suicide. And then Elijah said, oh, God from heaven, honor your name. And fire came from heaven. It's the spirit of prophecy. Just walk in it and things change. That's the, that's the, I'm telling you, that's the goal. That's where God wants you to walk. That when you walk into your home and you sense there's a peace missing in here. Just the fact that you walk in, things change. Your kids are out of order. You just speak the word and things change. That's what God wants us to, to be. Paul and so many of the other disciples and other people were on that level. Remember, uh, Peter would walk, and the Bible says that if when his shadow fell on people, they would get healed. Peter didn't even graduate from high school. How do I know? Because the Bible says that when people came up to Peter, they said, you're an unlearned man. How you doing all this? Bro, you ain't been to school. Spirit of prophecy. All right. So, and then, so number four. So I told you my degree of conformity to the character of Jesus Christ, I have to be changed to his image. I can tell if I'm becoming more like him in experience. Number two. My knowledge of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom of God. 
principles help my prosperity. My relationship with Christ helps my peace. But I got to know spiritual laws. I got to know how the kingdom of God works. How, what do I do if I'm broke? What do I do if I need prosperity? What do I do if I need healing? Those are principles. You can love Jesus. He can hear your cry, but not move. He's not moved. He's not moved into action. We're just crying. There's got to be faith attached to a principle, right? Number three, the outworkings of the power and the ability of God. There's, 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 there's got to come a time to where I can thank God for Pastor Butler, thank God for Pastor T, thank God for Pastor Faith, but I can lay hands on myself. I can lay hands on my own kids. They can come in agreement, but I got my own power. Number four, the fruits of the Spirit. I want to go there because I want to expound on these in the last 12 minutes. The fruits of the Spirit. Go to Galatians chapter 5. And I want to start in verse 16. I can take these fruits and literally ask my, I don't need my neighbor, I don't need my spouse, I don't need my, I can ask myself, this is my own report card. How am I doing here? So I'm going to show you 17 manifestations of my flesh. And then I'm going to show you the manifestations of the Spirit of God. I can measure them. So I can take these 17 things and look at my life and say, is my life in a fulgence of these things? You can look at them from month to month, year to year. I have a measuring system. Every couple of months I look at it and it's got five areas and I measure how I'm doing. Right? So let's look at Ephesians 5, Galatians uh, 5, thank you, and verse 16. It says, this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh is just simply saying our flesh is against our spirit, our spirit is against our flesh. So I've taught y'all multiple times that we're tripartite beings. We are a spirit, possess a soul, and live in the body. My spirit is saved. My soul is being saved. My body will one day be saved. My spirit love God's, my, loves God. My flesh hates God. It hates doing anything right. Right? So Paul says, I got to walk in my spirit. If not, my flesh going to cut up. Anybody just made a decision? I, I did last night. You know, I've been trying to do real good. Actually, I've been doing great with my health. And my, my body just said last night, we're going to get all three of them pieces of cake. <laughs> all three. And I ate them, Pastor T. I just want to let you know. It wasn't the boys. And I just went in. Huh? Well, I ate them for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I went in. I was laying in the bed with my stomach hurting. I said, flesh, you got me tonight. But when the morning come, his mercy is brand new. I cast these calories out in Jesus' name. Shaka pra ta 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 ta. Sometimes that old flesh just get the best of you, but I knew I wasn't being, like, I didn't need no sermon to tell me that. I knew my flesh was in control. And some of us have been in situations, the Holy Spirit is telling us, like, nah, I'm not leading. Your flesh is leading. All right? Don't make us a bad person. If you want to read how you overcome that, go read Romans chapter 7. Paul gives us a description. So let's talk about in verse 18. Let's go to verse 18. But if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Verse 19. People say, talk about flesh. We just keep saying flesh. And we like, what's that? What's flesh? When you say, I'm, you in your flesh. Well, we don't have to guess. The Bible tells us the things that come from our flesh. And so we all got issues with our flesh. I heard somebody say that. I, I couldn't believe it. I heard somebody say they don't have no problems with their flesh. I was like, well, thank God for you. Um, but the rest of the people I know, we got problems with it. Don't mean that it's ruling our life, but it's there. And the moment that we're not led by the Spirit, it will rear its ugly head. So let's look. Verse 19. The works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Lasciviousness is unbridled and unprincipled sexuality. You know, some people who, like Willie Wayne, would do anything with their sexuality? That's lasciviousness. That's a work of the flesh. Idolatry, witchcraft, 
hatred, variance. Variance means strife. That's when you cause division between two people. Uh, emulations. I'm reading King James. Emulations when you envy other people. Wrath. That's just a problem with anger. Strife. Seditions. Seditions means divisions. When you cause division among groups. Heresies. That's just blasphemy in the name of God. Envying. Murder. Drunkenness. Revelings. These are people that cause riots. And such like. Of the which I tell you before. As I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. All right, those are 17 manifestations of our flesh. Didn't say that you won't be saved, say you won't inherit the kingdom of God. What's the kingdom of God? God's way of doing the thing. So you won't have success on earth with these things being the leading uh, workings in your life. All right, so there's some people who, uh, who let their flesh just have their way and are in these things daily. All right? So I can take these, list them out and say, Holy Spirit, this is my issue. Holy Spirit, this is my problem. My fl our flesh does different things, right? So just because uh, I don't have an issue with one thing, I can't look at you because you do and say I'm better, right? All of, our, all of us got different issues, all right? Verse 22, verse 22 says, but the fruit of the Spirit. So, listen, I don't, you, listen, you don't have to know if somebody has the Spirit of God by if they speak in tongues or not. Thank God if you do. Fruit is a sign of the Holy Spirit. A tree does not bear its fruit until the, tr until the tree is mature. So fruits of the spirit are a sign of spiritual maturity. There are some people who gifted, who talented, who intellectual, got the gift of knowledge, can speak in tongues. They got all of that, but they're not mature. So sometimes they'll mount a pul pul pulpit or they'll even lead a group, but they'll lead that group down to hell because they're not mature, right? So we know that a Christian is mature. I, I'm teaching you, you don't have to guess. You don't have to look at a person and say, ah, I want to, I'm showing you how. Fruit means the thing is mature. What are these fruits? Let's look at them. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. Right. Those first three things are all about our relationship with God. By the way, those things are languages in the kingdom of God. I told you that before. The kingdom of God is love, joy, peace and the Holy Ghost. I know people are in the kingdom when they speak those languages. You can do whatever you want to do with me, but it don't stop me from loving you. I changed our relationship, but my love is never going to leave. I was, t I was talking to somebody today who called me. They was like, Pastor, I'm frustrated. All this stuff going on around me and stuff like that. I said, yeah. I said, yeah, but all oh, stuff is always going to go around. But, they, but it can't steal your peace. That's proof you mature. Right? Even if it's your child. All right. So the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. That's all about my relationship with God. That does not come from you. That is fruit from the Holy Spirit in you, and that comes out. Long suffering, gentleness, and goodness. That's about your relationship with me. That's about my relationship with you. When the Holy Spirit is in a person and they are mature, they will suffer long with you, they will be gentle towards you, and goodness will come out. It doesn't matter what's happening, it doesn't matter the situation, it doesn't matter whether it's a pandemic. You'll just always see that. That's about my relationship with you. So it don't matter what you did to me, gentleness is com can come out. I have a, a strong issue with people who try to control other people. It's not a fruit of the spirit. We obviously can influence other people. We can direct and guide other people. But the moment I try to control you, I know, I know based on the scriptures, that's not the Holy Ghost. I don't need to call anybody. I wonder if that's God. Uh-uh. 
Yeah, come on. And God didn't give us control over people. Genesis 1 and 26, he gave us dominion over the fish of the sea, fowl of the air, and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. No human being is listed there. So I don't care if that's your husband, I don't care if that's your pastor, I don't care if you're your supervisor. Anybody controlling you, that is demonic or a work of their flesh. Anybody trying to control you, that's demonic or a work of their flesh. It is not the Holy Ghost. All right. So the first three, love, joy, peace, has to do with my relationship with God. Long-suffering, gentleness, and goodness has to do with my relationship with other people. So sometimes you just got to wait people out. Don't give up on people so quick. They'll come around. They'll come around. All right. And then faith, meekness, and temperance, that's about my relationship with me. Faith, meekness, and temperance. These are fruit. So every month, every year, however I want to measure myself, I can look and say, how patient am I with my wife? Am I, do I exercise? Last year, I struggled with alcohol. Am I exhibiting self-control over that this year? I struggle with my emotions and anger. Am I temperate now? Am I good to other people regardless of they're good to me? I can measure that. That's how I can see if I'm growing. You still cussing people out? You still getting back at people? I see people, and they got their Jesus shirts on on Facebook, clapping back at people because they said something to them. I'm like, listen, if you're in the kingdom of God, I want to say this. If you're in the kingdom of God, you can't get taken advantage of. People may think that they are, but if you're in the kingdom of God and you serve the king, God will make sure whatever's done to you, he'll turn it and work it out for your good. They didn't get away with anything. They cussed you out, I know. They stole from you, I know. They walked out on you, lied. They broke your trust and your commitment. It's okay. God saw it. Jehovah Rohi, I'm the God that sees. He's just going to fix it. So you don't have to clap back. You don't have to get back. You don't have to write back, cuss them out. Uh, I see people get on and they put stuff on, but, but I don't want to say no names. Yeah, we know what you're talking about because we know the guy. Who, who got a red Wrangler on 20-inch rims? <laughs> yeah, the guy with the red Wrangler with 20-inch rims, but I ain't going to say no names. God has you. God will have vengeance for you. But that goodness, that love, it can't help but come out even against your enemies. If we are mature, and so if we're not, no problem. We just say, God, I need to grow up. And you could be 60 and not grown up. You can be 15 and be mature. Does that make sense what I'm saying? So you can measure that. So we don't have to be in la-la land. I don't know if I'm doing better. Pull that out. Pull those four things out, I promise you. All right. So we're at the end of our time. I only want to take four minutes if you have a question. I want to stop at 7.05 because I know y'all have a meeting. Any questions? I didn't finish going into depth. I'll do that next time we talk, but I just wanted to at least give you the four things. I'll go in more depth on how to develop those four areas next time we meet. Yes. Yeah. So no, that's going to be a separate teaching. But I am going to teach on the laws of the kingdom, um, and we can find most of those from Matthew five through chapter seven. But there are principles principles in the there are the principles in the earth realm that work whether you saved or unsaved. Unsaved people know that. Listen, I'm gonna tell you, demons know that. You can go right down to the. I've been I've been praying against this little psychic place down here. I'm just like you on my street. There's a little psychic place down here. You can go right down there. 
She'll look right into that little ball and give you stuff that you did not know. Real power, real influence. But it was because they operated and manipulated a principle in the earth realm. That's why unbelievers, can I go this far? That's why unbelievers can have babies. It's a power. It's a power in the earth realm to reproduce. It's a principle that is invoked through sexual activity. Saved and unsaved people can have babies. God put that power in the earth realm in the beginning. So even if a person has never heard of God before, they can lay down with another person and have a baby. Why? It's God's power, but it's, op it's, it's operative through a principle. Right? Right. So there's many principles in the kingdom that we can use that God is saying, why are you praying about that? Go do this. Like he told Moses. Moses like, God, you see Pharaoh is behind me and Red Sea is in front of me. He said, why are you crying unto me? I already taught you what to do, how to deal with the enemy. He said, lift your staff up. And I, we already worked on this. And Moses lift up his staff. Ta-da! No prayer, no fasting. It's just open. Those are principles, principles in the kingdom of God. There are certain things, and, and don't take me the wrong way I'm, where I'm saying this, and I'm, and I'm, I'm going I'm to make more sense when I teach this. There's, there's, let me just be honest. There's a lot of things I don't pray for. I don't have to. I just operate in the principles. I don't have to pray for friends. That's a principle in the kingdom of God. He who shows himself, friendly. you're going to have friends. If you ain't friendly, so now my job is to ask the Holy Ghost, go through scripture, what is a friend? And a friend is not what we think. Because the Bible says a friend sticks closer than a brother. So actually a friend is a deeper relationship than blood. So how do I get those people in my life? I got to start demonstrating what I learned about friendliness. I don't need to pray about that. I'm going to have friends. I'm going to always have people that, I'm not saying this arrogantly. I just know the principle. I'm going to always have people who like me. Always. I just know the principle. I'm going to always be able to go into a room, and when I leave, somebody's going to ask me for my phone. Man, you a cool man. It's a principle. I already know how to operate in it. I know how to work it. Right? I, I, I'll, I'll give you one, then I'm going to close. This a free. This a freebie. Talk from the Holy Spirit. When you talk to people for the first time, always say their name. I'm going to show you how this works. So I'm going to use Tish. So let's say me and you in a conversation, Tish. And I say, oh, Tish, it's good to see you. I say, oh, it's good to see you today. How's the family? Oh, everybody's good. That's good. Look, God like that hairdo. Oh, that's awesome. I heard God bless you with a miracle. We just having a dialogue, right? She feeling good because I'm lifting her up. Watch how, it, how, watch how it changes. And I'm making this up and I use her name. Tish. That's a beautiful hairdo, Tish. Tish, I heard God is blessing you, woman of God. Tish, there's just a smile about you. You see how when I call your name? That's why Jesus called Lazarus' name. It's a power in calling people's name. So I just learned that so I can go in the room and say, hey, Yolanda. I'm going to always have friends. It's a principle. I ain't pray. I ain't fast. Oh, God, nobody likes me, God. Oh, God, send me. Uh-uh. Walk into the room, exercise the principle. And it's funny that most guys don't use biblical stuff, but they use it. They, they use it. it. I read the book. I read they stealing it. Because they'll tell you to be formal with the customer or to say the customer name. Make sure you say their name many times you yeah. talk to them. Yeah. 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 Say their name. That's it. Yes. 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 Y'all stand to your feet. Absolutely. Yes. Never talk about yourself. Try that. Just for the next seven days, you get into a conversation with anybody. Don't talk about yourself. Watch what they're going to do. They're going to say, you, why are you so quiet? Because we're just used to focusing on us. Say, no, I just want to hear what's going on with you. Man, they'll be blowing your phone up next week. But you, you, you free? Because we like talking about us. So, so there's principles. And I'm going to go over those. Um, at uh, 10, 10, I'm going to teach specifically. 
Like everybody in this room should have favor. Like when something's not working in your life, there's a door that you can't open. Like there's a flow that's not happening. We should always have a flow. I'm going to say this and I'm done for real. We should always have a flow. That's a promise in Psalm chapter 1. You should be planted like a tree by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither. That means that I don't care what the season is, my leaf is always green. I always experience favor. That's a principle. We learned that from the book of Esther. It's a principle in the earth realm. You can always have favor. Always. I tell my wife this all the time. I say, baby, just when we was finna get low on money, like, bam, there it come. I'm looking for it. I'm standing by the mailbox looking at God like, 